For the last video in graph neural networks, I would like to take a different approach. I would like to show you how I research some topics, how I try to understand new libraries. The reason is, if you read this or if you see this in six months time, eight months time, the code will have changed significant. None of the notebooks you will see here, you could use then because code will evolve constantly. So it, it is more important to understand how to find out certain things, how to investigate new Python libraries, checking if you can use them in your everyday work. So let's start this very, very personal approach. And maybe I can show you something that you can use in your professional career. So in my last video, I showed you about JAX. This is an advanced machine learning and ecosystem environment developed by Google Research. And they have a library for graph neural networks in JAX, and it's called Giraffe. And the first thing I do is normally I go to GitHub. So you see here we have DeepMind, Giraffe, and then you look at the release here on the right hand side. And if you see that the release 10 days ago, that's good, it's an active account. But then you look at the version 0 .0 0.0.0.2 .0 development <laughs> and you immediately understand, okay, this is far from any way that you can deploy this. This is just highly experimental. This is for development. And then I, I look at just the time scale. When were the last comments here on the right side? And you see everything more or less stopped a year ago. And then I read about what they write about uh, the, the library. Normally they ask how to start it, what they can do. They give you a short example. And then they say, Giraffe provides a set of implemented reference model for graph neural networks models for you to use. And this is exactly what I'm looking for. I'm looking for encoded messages that have been developed, that have been discovered. An archive publication, a preprint publication is available on a new methodology, how to calculate some specific features on GNSNs or on neural network in example. So I check out this, I try to understand it. And then they have always that they provide you some basic examples or some training examples. So have a look at this then go in, have a look at the code itself. And if you go in and you have a look, oh, there are some examples, So this is nice. So we have some thematic feature that we can look out for. So I oh yeah, have karate club. So this is for GNN, one of the basic examples. And I have a look at the code. I have a look at the libraries they have to import. Okay, then they define the data, the graphs tuple here in this case. This is how they encode data. This is how they encode relations. This is how to define networks. And then I just have a look what functions they define, what compiler, just in time compilers to use. Have I look at the code, try to understand what's going on without knowing anything about it, just to understand the complexity of the code and what the code achieves, the problem you set out to do, to, <laughs> the problem you set out to solve. <laughs> Next thing, I have a look at who the hell is using this? Where does it originate it? Who is behind this code? And here you have a page from DeepMind a blog post from December 2020, so almost 13 months ago. And you see here, yes, JAX. JAX, a machine learning framework developed by Google research teams, blah, blah, blah. And what is JAX? And JAX at DeepMind in the ecosystem. And then you see here, they have Giraffe. This is exactly what we are looking for, the JAX implementation of a graph neural network, of the different models of a graph neural network, from attention models to convolution models, whatever. And we're looking to use this library for the already encoded models. And then I have a look here and they say, okay, Giraffe provides a standardized data structure for graphs, a set of utilities for working with graphs, and a zoo of easily forkable and extensible graph neural network models. 
And this is the reason why I'm here. I want to understand which model I can use for my specific task. And then this is it more or less. So now I know a little bit about the code. I have an idea who developed it, why they developed it, in what ecosystem they developed it, if it's a university, if it's a multinational corporation. If I want to implement it in my notebook, and for example, my notebook does not have an NVIDIA uh, GPU, a graphics card, I have a look, okay, Conda Forge is there, a package already available. And as you can see here, yes, 29 days ago, there was version 0 .0 0.0.1 development <laughs> is now available on Conda Forge. So that's great, but also the indication Okay, we are here deeply in experimental land. But then, if you still think it is of interest to you, go forward, have a look. And the way I do it is normally I go to read the docs, and then you, there you have Shiraf, and they give you a documentation, an overview, depending on the refined presentation, using the SUS contribute support, and then I have a look at the models. And this is where you really see what kind of, of network have been implemented. And as you can see here, we are here at a rather development stage, at an experimental stage. You can see here, okay, we have here our graph network, the different arguments. And then you can see here this implementation follows our algorithm in preprint archive documentation. So you can go there, you can have a look at it, you can try to understand the algorithm, and then this is already coded for you. You just fill in your parameters, have a look at the parameters here again, and then it tells you what it returns, a method that applies the configure graph network. You then an interaction network, again, you have an archive source, then there are some features, but we are looking at model, some deep set, also an archive, then some, ah, here we go. A GAT, and here we have a graph attention network layer. Maybe you're interested in this if you have some knowledge about transformer models, maybe from some different grid structure, or maybe from some sequence structure of the data. So you can see here the implementation, also based on some archive publication. You can check it out with the node features from JAX, a GMP array. I talked about this in my last video. You have graph convolution models, returns a method that applies a graph convolution layer. Of course, you can stack it. And so you understand here from the documentation which kind of models they have implemented in this. And so for me, what I would take away from this is maybe I would open another window where I would put the other two most interesting software packages for me personally, for my specific task. And this would be, for example, PyTorch Geometric for GNSN. And maybe it would also be, if I want to have it, a pure TensorFlow implementation, it would be the Deep Graph library, DGL. So I would put up those other two windows here right next to it, and I would simply compare which kind of models have been implemented here in code already and which kind of model is already implemented in the other two models. And then I would start to have a look, okay, if I have to have Jack's model running, if I really am going up to speed, how does the other two model compare with this? Are the other models available on all three different models? Maybe it's just available in one library. So this is the way I go forward. I choose the library I would like to use, especially with libraries I'm not really familiar with. And I'm starting out. I also look for complete Jupyter notebooks where there's the code from start to finish solving a specific problem I'm familiar with. So I know exactly if I have my different methodology my different code, my PyTorch code or TensorFlow. And now this here is, for example, in JAX, I know how long my models take, what is the runtime of my models, what is specific to my models. And then I try here to find a notebook where, the, where I can run a familiar topic and simply compare it and get a feeling where the strength, where the weaknesses of 
the specific implementations. So this is the way I would approach learning about a giraffe. If I have to have Jax as my, as my operating level, if you want, if to have to implement it in Jax, maybe I would go just yet in, in my personal case with some PyTorch Geometric. Maybe I would go with deep graph libraries implementation where I can choose a convolution model or I choose a attention-based model, whatever, I can stack it together. I can build my own models, but with some pre-implemented uh, code and algorithms that have been tested. So this is the way I approach investigating a different library, seeing if it fits to me. This is the way forward for me. And if I, if it checks all the boxes and I think, hey, this is what I want to learn, then, and it is especially then I start to look for a course on some university presentation, I don't know, MIT, Stanford Online, or whatever online platform you choose. Find a online course that you are familiar with where you think, hey, this is a nice community, great people, highly educated in their specific area, they present to me that I want to learn. And then I make my deep dive into the code. And I think for December 2021, I would like to enter the area of explainable artificial intelligence and maybe have a short survey, short hint about a knowledge graph and current developments in knowledge graphs. If you have some thoughts about these two topics, please let me know. Thank you. And I see you in the next video.